Hi there, and thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today's notes are going to be called misleading graphs. So what makes graphs misleading or distorted, meaning they don't accurately represent some information? Today's notes must have the following things. The four ways in which the graphs could be misleading and the pictures that go with them. So you're going to be sketching pictures about the graphs. If you want to use colors to make your notes interactive, you can. And then also the answers to the questions A, B, and C at the very end of the video. Let's go ahead and get started. These are just some examples and review words of keywords. We're going to start with when the entire group is surveyed, that's considered to remember a population. When part of the entire group is surveyed, and sometimes this is the easier way to sample or to survey a group of people, that's going to be considered the sample. When the sample is represented in the population, that is going to be considered an unbiased sample. But when the sample does not represent the population, that'll be a biased sample, meaning a biased outlook. Some more of these are just at kind of considering what is happening. Ms. Jones wants to know which sport seventh graders in the district like best. There are seventh graders in six different schools in the district and she can collect data in one of the following ways. If she asked every seventh grade student at all six schools, she'd be asking the population. That would be a great set of data, but it's also going to take her a really, really long time. If she asked the seventh grade boys at three of the schools, that would be considered a biased sample because she's only asking boys and she's only asked three of the schools. What she probably should have done was ask seventh grade girls and boys in at every one of the schools. The other way that she could do a survey would be asking every other seventh grader at three of the schools. That would be more of like more of a unbiased sample or more representative of the population because it's selected at random and the population is evenly represented. The next thing we're going to move into is how graphs can be misleading. So you need to make sure to get ready to write some stuff down. Graphs and statistics are often used to persuade. Advertisers and others may accidentally or intentionally present information in a misleading way. Here we go. The first thing we're going to write down is how a graph is misleading. So again, you're going to need to pause the video here to copy. An axis is broken or numbers are left off of the axis. The main thing you're concerned about is this guy right here, the broken axis. Go ahead and take the time to pause, write down, and click play when you're ready to go on to number two. Number two tells us the intervals on an axis are not the same length. Notice how we go nothing for a little bit and then we have all the way jumped up to 18,000. This will be another thing that you would need to write in your notes. That is not a good way to represent data on a graph. Go ahead and take the time to pause the video, write and draw the graph, and then press play when you're ready for number three. The third way a graph can be misleading is when a scale is compressed or really, really tiny so that it's hard to see the difference among the categories. Notice all of the categories are right here between like 5.01 and 5.02. So what they could have done is just expanded the graph a little bit. This also calls for you can't really figure out what changes are, so that's just something else that you could add in your notes. Pause the video now to write down the third way a graph is misleading and then sketch this graph right here. Once you're done, go ahead and click play and get ready for number four. The last way a graph is misleading is when pictorial graphs distort the data. Notice that in this graph, the difference in size between the cars and the truck, trucks do not give us an accurate comparison. The trucks need to be the same size as the car in order to give us a better comparison. Again, take the time to pause the video, write down the fourth way that graphs can be misleading and a picture that accurately represents what this is talking about. Click play when you're ready to um, answer the last slide. Here's your last slide. You're going to again pause here and answer questions A, B, and C about how each graph is misleading. Make sure that you have the correct answer. Once you're done, go ahead and click play to end the video.
This concludes our video. Just make sure that your notes have the four ways that a graph can be misleading and the answers to the previous slide A, B, and C. Once you're done bringing me your notes, I'll give you your homework and you can start that before class ends. Thanks for tuning in.